Hi everyone. Um, today I want to talk to you about reactive programming. Um, I'm Mattia and I'm working at The Zone. And as Ali said, uh, The Zone is like Netflix, uh, but instead of streaming content like um, videos and TV and sports, sorry, TV series and movies, we are like streaming uh, sports. Um, right, this is the agenda of today. I'm gonna just introduce to you um, what are the most common paradigms that we're using. And then I'm gonna switch to React programming and then MobX and MobX uh, state tree. Can I first ask you how many of you are using uh, reactive programming at work or? Great, lots of you, nice. So um, as introduction, I wanna just show you the, the most common paradigms, so imperative and functional. Uh, these are the most common one, and um, all of us are using it. And in an imperative way, just like a sequence of steps that we're using to achieve a specific target or to change a state, but mainly we're using it, we are describing it how to do, so how the application does a specific um, task. In the function programming instead, we are just using pure functions, and through the pure functions, we can use it like to avoid the um, shared state, mutable data or side effects. This one is an example of using um, the function programming in, the, in an interactive way. And I believe that this one is the one that most of us are using it. So as you can see, we do have a separation of concern where we do, we do have the uh, calculator who is in charge just of um, outputting the sum of two elements, A and B. And we do have a receipt object that is actually the receiver of the calculator object. So we're passing through as a dependency. And so as you can see in the constructor, we got the calculator, we initialize it. And in the print method of the receipt, we are just using the dependency injected. We are calling straight the method inside the calculator. So doing that, when I'm running print on the console, I will see um, as an output, like a total that comes back from uh, the sum method in the calculator. Using this kind of approach has some issues because like in that case, as we just saw, the two objects are like coupled together because like we need to pass through as a dependency injection, the main object. And so the receiver or the, the host um, object, receipt in that case, needs to, call, needs to know which is the method that needs to be triggered to receive back a specific output. Uh, the second and one of the most common issues is like every time that the state changes, we should just update all of the dependent objects. So in that case, received, if it changes the state, received needs to know it, needs to be updated. So we need to notify those changes to all of the dependent objects. How can we fix this with reactive programming? This one is the, um, the definition of reactive programming and says, so the key point about reactive programming is like, not caring anymore about the propagation of data, but just relying on this kind of structure, this kind of architecture. So reactive programming would allow us to not um, care anymore about updating the state or like notified to the receiver uh, wherever the state has been updated because the reactive programming does it for us. Um, what's behind the scene? So reactive programming uses two patterns. The observer pattern, uh, the is nothing that create two different kind of ob um, objects. One is the observable and one is the observer. And the trick behind it is like the observable object that usually um, owns the state in it as like a list of all the observer that are actually observing it. So it's actually straightforward. So we do have like an object A that has a state. We got like a lots of receivers or listeners and let's say B, C, and D, and A, when it changes the state, will know already which are the listener that needs to notify the update. So that's what is behind the observer pattern. pattern. And then we got the iterator patter, pattern. It's, it's such a complex word to pronounce. <laughs> um, as, again, so what it does, the iterator pattern, is behind the scene actually is. I need to introduce a new concept, actually two new words, that is like producer and consumer. So the producer is the one who is gonna change it, the state, and the consumer is the one that consumes. So it's the one who needs to display it. With the iterator pattern, pattern what, what happened is the, yep, 
um, the consumer wouldn't know anything about the producer. So like in, I will show you in a sec, but in the example before, we do have the um, what's called calculator object with a sum that, that has the, um, the method behind it that needs to be triggered to update the state. Instead of the um, received, shouldn't know what needs to be called or how it should be done. So that's why the implementation, as I said there, should be hided to the consumer. So this one is the, um, what we saw earlier. I'm just comparing, um, I hope that everyone can see it. I'm just comparing the two approach. One is the uh, interactive way and one is the reactive way. And as you can see, if you want to compare those ones in the um, left example, so in an interactive way, we do have this um, separation of concern. We've got two different objects, but received still needs to call the sum method that belongs to an external object. So in that case, received needs to know how to update the, the state. Instead, with the reactive approach, it's different because reactive approach introduces a third player in this kind of um, structure. And the player is the observable. So in that case, the calculator, in, yeah, the calculator itself, instead of like um, exporting or outputting the um, sum method, it's just exporting or outputting the observable. So the observable is just like observing, as I said earlier, on top of the sum method. And it's the only one that we are injecting in the receipt method. So in the constructor, we got the observable this time. We do not, we are not injecting any instance of the calculator. So in that case, receipt wouldn't know anything about the sum method. We'll just react as soon as we change the state in the um, producer. Um, I hope that is kind of clear. And in order to do that, this one is Rx is another word I cannot pronounce. Rxjs, uh, just for simplicity. And as you can see, we got the subscribe on the observable. So every time that changes, this one, the receipt will react and will update the, the view. So the benefit are like, First of all, we got like a replication of these updates because like assuming that we go like an A object that is the one who has the producer and has the states and those states are used by many other objects. So in that case, we don't have to trigger every time the update to all of those objects. But in that case, so with a reactive um, programming, all of those are the values are gonna be out notified and will react uh, at the same time. We do have like an isolation and in that case, it's going to be in time and space because like the different objects, they can have different life cycles. So they don't have to share the life cycles and they don't need to know each other for uh, at the same time to connect to have the communication between them. And last but not least, we got delegation because as I said earlier, the task belongs to the calculator object, doesn't belong to the receipt. So the receipt in that case, doesn't, it, doesn't know anything about it, but just delegates the update to the, um, to the producer. Um, Mobex. Mobex is one of the framework that allows us to achieve this kind of reactive programming. And this one is from the um, creator of Mobex. Uh, actually, it's his motto, I guess. And he says that anything that can be derived from the state should be derived automatically. Because like, we don't want to deal anymore to update every object that is like, um, needs to be updated from the state. Um, so Mobex, uh, this one, I, I want to just show you the structures what are the key element of Mobex. Um, Mob who uses the um, observables, like in that case, we can use like a decorator. And this one will let the application knows that from now on, I want to know whatever happened to those two values, let's say unit and temperature Celsius. And we do have the computed. The computed is like pure functions that allow us to derive complex value from the state. So the computed value are the only one used to retrieve back the value from the state. So like in that case, if I want to get the temperature Kelvin, I need, I'm just declaring this computed value and I'm using it to get back that value from the state. We also have the reactions. Reactions is like computed value, but is used just to handle side effects. Let's say we got, we got a, like a call to the API, and then as soon as the API comes back, we want to apply some changes to the, to the state. If you want to change the state, we do have the actions. So the actions are just made to change the state. So in that case, we call, let's say, set unit. 
And as you can see, set units accept the param and uh, um, updates the unit. Just because it's updating the unit, it's going to update the whole computed value because the computed value are just waiting to be updated. And last but not least, we got the observer that is, as I you know, showed you earlier, is the, um, the component who is actually looking at that state. So in this example, um, let's say the component up, I declare the observer. Um, so in that case, the observer is like observing to the temperature instance. And I'm just displaying um, temperature, that it's the in instance <coughs> dot temperature. That is, you cannot see my mouse, that it's the second computed value. So what this thing means is like, these are two different objects, temperature and up object. Temperature knows the state and knows how to change the state. The up it instead doesn't know anything about how to manipulate the state. The only thing it does is just like displaying the temperature itself. So the temperature is the one you will see in the up, in uh, the div ones. And then as soon as you change any value in the producer, so the temperature, the computed value will automatically like update and will notify to the uh, user, in that case, the observer. This one is the, the flow that actually follows. So assuming that in the, in the UI, we got an event. That event is gonna trigger an action. Action, we just saw, is the one that we're using to change the state. Um, so as soon as, we, as soon as we change the state, what's gonna happen in a reactive way, that's the key, so that's the, you know, what the difference is. We don't have to deal with the updates because the, all the computed value would automatically update because they are listening to the state. And as soon as the computed value updates, those ones will notify to wherever observer are observing them. And so the observer are gonna react to that change. And so that line should go back to the UI. And so we're gonna update the UI. Um, from the arrows, I guess you can see the difference because the, from action to state is something that needs to be done from the user in the UI. Whatever happened next is just like reacting to the, the change of the state. MobX is basically this, allow us to give, to take advantage of the program, reactive programming, but it's too flexible. So that means it has give us too much room to play with. So that's why right after uh, the same creator create the MobX state three. MobX state three, as is said, uh, is an opinionated composable data model that uses MobX state three. So through MobX state three, it just like sits on top of MobX. So MobX give us the reactive programming and the state three give us the, the structure. Because like through this, we can have like a model definition. So um, again, two small objects, two models, where we go like say a to-do object and a to-do's object. And in those ones, we do have, we do have, we are declaring um, the structure. So we can have like types in it and we go, we can have, um, strings, booleans, wherever we want it. And we also can have like arrays, maps, and lots of other definitions. The reason why we're using this, because we describe the shape, and describing the shape, we go like a runtime type check. Um, so as soon as you boot your application, you will see if some object that has been passed through is not what was required, or we're not receiving something that was expecting, or is a different shape. And through this one, you can compose different objects or stores or tree, and you can extend them. Then we do have again the views that has been just implemented in the state tree. And so the view uh, give us uh, the, the options to retrieve back, uh, to derive the values. And I just um, showed you two different ways to do it. One is like using the JavaScript uh, get, and the other one is just like a normal function. These are slightly different because MobX um, approach them in a different way. So the getter is like normal computed one and whatever value has been um, retrieved from is gonna be tracked and it's gonna be cached. For the functions instead, it's not been, um, so won't be cached. So just like keep in mind, if you don't use params, uh, it's not caching. And for both of those ones, you cannot use them to change the state because we have to uh, use the actions. Actions, data mutation, um, again, is the one we saw earlier, but in this guy, um, so in the state tree, is like um, uh, built in. And this is quite important because um, you can only change 
the tree if you're inside the same model. So just coming back to the to-do and to-do list and to-dos, if you want to change the state of, let's say, to-do, you have to be, the action is to be declared and triggered within the to-do. You cannot do it from an, a different tree. So that's why you have to be inside the model. This one is the example altogether. Um, so as you can see, we got the model, we got the views, and we got the action. There is no reactions because like, um, it's just the same as a view, but just for handling the side effects. So to conclude, the tree in depth. Every object is a node tree. So every object that we are declaring, that we are describing it, is like a node tree. And just because it's a node tree, every node in a tree is a tree itself. So you can have like, um, you can nest them, you can compose them, and you can have it the same, the structure that you prefer. And as I said, you can compose those, so you can compose those objects and extend them. And MobX gives you the live hooks for um, each model that you're declaring it. So you can have like after create or whatever you want it. And then this one is another important concept. Every object that you, yeah, every object uh, that you uh, yes, that you are creating is both immutable and mutable. Uh, what I mean is, as soon as you create a store, as soon as you create a tree, what MobX state tree does is serialized wherever that you've done it in a snapshot. So in this way, it's going to be cheap. But if you want to change it, it uses JSON patch. The logic behind it um, is the same that React uses for reconciliation. So in that case, React uses that for the view. So it's going um, to have a virtual uh, DOM of the, new, of the new object and it just compare with the existing one and applies just the changes. The same happened for uh, MobX A3, but just for data. So we do have like a snapshot of the tree, and then we're gonna have, we do know what has been changed because it's gonna be like a JSON patched, and so it's gonna create a new snapshot, immutable in this case. We just apply the, the differences made. The snapshots allow us to have like time traveling, so you can move back and forward between your um, snapshots. So in case you, you do have, I don't know, Whatever error problem, you can just revert it back to the previous state. And then, as I said earlier, there is like the runtime type checking that is uh, really handy when you, when you run your application. Last but not least, um, you can create multi stores. So it's not a singleton store, but you can create as many stores as you want it. So you can have like a flat um, structure or whatever. The only thing is like you can nest in a store, so in a tree, wherever trees you wanted. So or at least the one has been the one that is needed in the tree. Um, if you want to do no more, there are those links. Um, the first one is like a book that actually um, a colleague of mine uh, wrote. And that one, of course, goes a lot deeper than what I just explained to you. Um, and starts from architectures um, to the reactive one. And then these are the documentation for MobX and MobX A3. Thank you.